Hey, was geht's? This is Baritone Kenneth Moore coming to you today from Mannheim, Germany. And with this video, I thought I'd just record a little intro on what you're about to see. I recently just recorded an interview with Pedro de la Acantada, who is a celloist, author, and Alexander Technique expert. And in this video, we really just go over what Alexander Technique is and the real truth, you could say, of it and how it applies to our lives. So check it out and as always, enjoy. Now, let me tell you that. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, a big city. And at age 19, I left to go study music in the United States. I went to the East Coast. I went to a small college uh, called Purchase, SUNY Purchase. Yeah. Stayed there for four years, and then I went to Yale for two years for my graduate degree. Ah. All at SUNY Purchase, I changed cello teachers in my sophomore year. Okay. And my new cello teacher, looking at me playing the cello, said, Pedro, I think it'll be good for you to take some lessons in the Alexander Technique. And like everybody else who had taken lessons, my teacher had taken lessons, he found it difficult to describe. But I went to take a lesson uh, with the teacher he recommended, not knowing what I was getting into. Yeah. And uh, uh -huh. it was revolutionary and very interesting and agreeable. And uh, this was 37 years ago, and I'm still doing it. Yeah. So it's quite something. That, that, that's how I got into it. Okay. So what would you say um, the Alexander Technique is in your personal like, definition? Well, I... I, I have been thinking about this, yeah. and uh, strictly speaking, I would try to avoid defining it. Okay. I would say it's too big a thing, there it has too many dimensions, it's kind of difficult, it's only after you do it that you have a sense for what it is, okay. and from the outside, it's very difficult to describe or define. Mm. So that's my first cop-out, is to uh, try not to define it. Yeah. And then if I have to say something about it... I would make a choice between two things that are similar. One is a paradigm, and the other is an operating system. Okay. A paradigm is a collection of uh, concepts, tools, filters, priorities. So a way of thinking and a way of living in the world. That's a paradigm. Okay. We could say that uh, Catholicism is a paradigm, that psychoanalysis is a paradigm, that free market economic theory is a paradigm. Okay. So somebody who believes in the free market is going to say that uh, everything in the world is somehow related to the free market. And that's a way of thinking and living, making decisions, yeah. setting up policy and whatnot. We could say that uh, Tai Chi is a paradigm, all having to do with energy and movement and moving in particular ways and whatnot. Yeah. So we could say, I could say, or I'm going to say, that the Alexander Technique is a paradigm. It's a series of concepts and priorities. That's really deep. Uh, I'm going to have to think about that. Sure. So it's not just a set system of steps that uh, a person goes through. It's, it's more like a, I don't want to say philosophy, uh -huh. but... but yeah, it's hard to explain. Like, yeah. yeah. Let's go way back in time mm -hmm. to a place that uh, could be Greece or India or something like this, where philosophy, psychology, religion, and daily living were not separate. It was one thing. And uh, if we imagine that those things are one thing, then we can say that the Alexander Techniques of Philosophy, because it's also psychology, it's also metaphysics, mm -hmm. it's also a, a practical way of living every day. Wow. That's... But if you want to enter this paradigm, if you want to pass from your current paradigm to a new paradigm, you may need a method. And then, because you need a method to learn the paradigm, well, we will we have to find ways. Okay. And then uh, we have steps, we have procedures, mm -hmm. we have games, we have uh, um, ideas, we have habits. So then we have a method, but I don't think the Alexander Technique is a method. I think it's a paradigm. Mm. You only need the method to learn the paradigm. So, so like the method that most of us see of Alexander Technique is more like a bridge leading us to a bigger mindset. Absolutely. Okay. okay. You can definitely say that. Yeah. Or rather, I say that because uh, you may have a different definition oh. of the Alexander Technique. Okay. And if you talk to some other professional, he or she probably will have a completely different definition as well. Mm -hmm. But you ask me, Pedro, 
what is your personal definition of the Alexander technique? And here it is. I think it's a paradigm. Or if you want to, if you think the word paradigm is too uh, hoity-toity, call it an operating system. Okay. You know, Windows and Linux and uh, and Mac are very different. They have really different uh, procedures and uh, priorities and ways of working. And if you've been on uh, Windows all your life, mm-hmm. suddenly you go into Mac and it's going to be a shift in paradigm. Yeah. Well, operating system is the same thing. Wow, that, that's great. Um, I love that. Um, yeah, so we know that uh, Alexander Technique uh, deals a lot with the tensions in our body as performers or just everyday living. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I'm was wanting to ask you is, what do a lot of these tensions and problems come from? Like, how do they start? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. So uh, we could say that every last problem is different from all other problems. So each little problem has its own causes. Or we could say that every I think both approaches are valid. So depending on the musician and what she's doing and how she sings or how she thinks about singing, she will have certain problems. And then a trombonist uh, that has a uh, uh, backache, uh, it's a whole other problem. That's one way of thinking about it. Mm. And the other way of thinking about it is that all problems are the same. Mm-hmm. And all problems come from uh, your having becoming temporarily insane. Okay. Or crazy. Yeah. You have a problem because you're crazy, you know? So you have some crazy idea of the effort that you need in order to sing. Okay. And uh, because you're really, really convinced of this way of you know, how much effort you need in your breathing, and that means you're crazy. You, uh-huh. <laughs> you're insane. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, some pianist who bangs at the piano has a crazy idea about sound production. But she's absolutely convinced that the only way to play loud is to bang in this particular way. Mm-hmm. And in that moment, she's just uh, temporarily... Alexander himself, he he didn't say crazy or insane. He would say that you are temporarily out of touch with reason. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, every problem that every singer or musician or cellist or pianist has, one way of thinking about it is that in your mind, you have some preconceived ideas or some fixed ideas or some uh, unconscious ideas or some uh, uh, old ideas, or some uh, out-of-place ideas. Mm -hmm. And those ideas are creating a kind of a reality at the instrument or in singing. And uh, what you have, you know, if you really, really, really want to change your posture and your effort, you have to change the idea that is creating the posture and the effort. So they're connected then. It's more like a... It's like the mind and the body... It's like they're not really separate. They're more... That's exactly right. Okay, wow. Yeah, that's uh, the principle number one of the paradigm or the operating system. The absolute first idea, body and mind are not two, they are one. So wow. it's a non-dualistic paradigm. It says uh, everything is unified. Wow. So your one thing and your doing are one and the same. Hmm. So... We could still say that uh, every problem is going to be very specific and the problems of a singer uh, hitting his high notes is very different from the problem of a cellist doing his string crossings. Mm. Well, we can say now there's something that really unifies all problems and it's the way you're thinking about the problem which creates the problem. Wow. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe no, I'm I like wrong. that. I like that. Yeah. But that's, that's <laughs> the way I'm thinking about it here. Mm. Wow, that, that's really uh, deep because a lot of the times we think that it's some technical thing or like, mm-hmm. but it's really in your head. Yeah, it's a in lot, your head. So. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you take some simple example where a violinist looks at score and the score is full of double stops and fast notes and she looks at it and says, this is really difficult. Mm. Except she has a colleague or a teacher or a friend who just whizzes through says, no, this is really easy. And that means that when she says, this is this is really difficult, what she really means is that for me right now, this looks very difficult. I don't know how to do it. And I'm afraid of doing it. And I'm afraid that I don't know how to do it. Mm-hmm. So she's not really talking about the score and the difficulties. 
she's talking about her fears and her blockages. And she says, this is difficult. It's in her mind because the other guy says, no, you know, you just put your fingers here and you do this. And then she's going to say, but I, I, I can't do it. Mm. And I says, no, you can just do this. Wow. Yeah. That's great. It's a lot of uh, awareness. Uh, so um, I was wondering if you could uh, talk a little bit about um, the self-discovery in Alexander Technique. Because we, if we have all these tensions, how can we become more aware of... Do you know what I'm asking? Sure. Yeah. I think I do. I, I may be wrong, but I think okay. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> more more self-awareness. and yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, one way of putting it is that um, all the schools of thought in the world, all the philosophies, and also meditation, and Zen, and Tai Chi, and psychotherapy and union psychotherapy. So all these schools of thought, they're trying to help us live better. We could say that they're all saying more or less the same thing, mm. which is be in the moment, live in the moment. And now the fashionable word is mindfulness. Be mindful of where you are, what you're doing, what you want to do, and how you're reacting with the world in this very moment, right here, right now. Mm. And I think the Alexander Technique, depending on how you practice it, can take you to a place where you're more alert to the moment, to yourself in the moment, and to how yourself in the moment and the space are completely connected. Mm. So once you enter that space, where it, which is here now, and it's uh, me, the first person of Pedro, I'm right here, right now. Yeah. And it's like... Uh, Many things melt away and you feel good. And then you decide that uh, some things that you've been doing uh, were born not of here now, mm -hmm. but there then. Some other place, some other person, some other time. Yeah. It's an idea that uh, it's, it's not really your idea right here, right now. So in my own case, it took me roughly 25 years to get rid of... Uh, a kind of a cello playing that was not born of right here, right now. Okay, but it was okay. born of uh, somebody else's idea of what cello playing should be like. And that was a kind of a, a cage. I lived in a cage as a cellist mm -hmm. where I thought I really had to do things in a certain way for a certain reason. And uh, through a lot of work, I let go of that. And I discovered my true self as a cellist. Mm. And my own true self as a cellist is not playing a concerto with some orchestra and touring or something like this, which I thought that I needed to do or that I should do. Mm -hmm. But it's using the cello as a field to explore um, my capabilities, to explore sounds, to explore harmonics, to explore the drone, to explore consonant and dissonance, mm -hmm. to explore acoustics and how you occupy the space. And then uh, I started making my own music, which has a kind of a healing dimension. Mm -hmm. Songs that I sing and I play the cello, I accompany myself, or I play the piano. Oh, so it could be solo cello, solo piano, or voice and cello, or voice and piano, or cello and whistling, or cello and howling, something like this. And those songs, which are very simple, much simpler than the music of J.S. Bach or Mozart, whom I love dearly, I think they're great composers. But my own music that I'm making today, uh, the music of my here now, is this simple, consonant and healing music that I just really, really, really love making. Mm. And I think uh, when I first took an Alexander lesson 37 or 38 years ago, I had no idea that uh, decades later I would be whistling and howling. Mm. Now, I'm not saying that uh, every Alexander student will end up whistling and howling. That's what happened to me. And you said, you know, the discovery of the self, and that's what I discovered, <laughs> that I was born to howl. So uh, that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> and I think it was that uh, non-duality of the paradigm that says body and mind that's one. And you're creating those problems in your head. You're temporarily insane. You got to calm down a little bit. You got to let go of those ideas. You got to learn how to do nothing. And then you have a free mind 
and the free mind will come up with a fresh suggestion. Mm -hmm. And uh, my free mind came up with the suggestion that I whistle and howl. So who knows what's going to happen to you 38 years from now. Perhaps you'll be whistling and howling and perhaps uh, uh, you'll be singing uh, in the Met. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We, we just don't know, do we? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, um, I think that's a great place to leave it. Uh, yeah, I'll put a, a link down to your work below. And everybody watching, you should definitely check it out. Uh, I just want to thank you again for taking the time to do this. And we'll keep in contact. It's been a pleasure.